Hello, Wesley Church. Thank you for joining me for a few minutes today. As you can see by the sanctuary, we are getting ready for Vacation Bible School. It starts this Sunday. Parents, if you haven't gotten the kids registered, do so immediately. Go to our website, call the church office, or message me. I will make sure to help you get your kids registered. It's going to be a, quite an adventure of a week. There's nothing quite like Vacation Bible School. Well, I'd like to take a few minutes and just talk about three things today. First, I'll share a passage about healing prayer. Then I want to describe how we're going to begin offering, I think, a special kind of healing prayer. We're going to begin offering that here at Wesley this Sunday. And then lastly, I'd like to talk about something that I think people are curious about, and that's the fact that Debbie and I are a clergy couple. We both are pastors serving different churches. Let me start with James 5, 13 and 14. It's a pretty familiar passage. James says this, If any of you are suffering, they should pray. If any of you are happy, they should sing. If any of you are sick, they should call for the elders of the church, and the elders should pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, we often pray for the sick. We do that here at Wesley. We pray on Sundays for those who... Who the names have come in to the church, people we know, we love, that are ill. We pray Thursday morning at our prayer time at 10. We send prayer lists home with people in our bulletin, and we pray regularly for those that are sick. But James instructs more. James says to call together the leaders, the elders of the church, and have them to pray for the one who is sick and to anoint that person with oil. Now, I believe God responds when we are faithful to follow this kind of instruction. Coming for healing prayer is an act of humility. It's an act of faith. The answer to the prayer might not be exactly what we were expecting, but this is true. God does hear and does respond with God's goodness when we come and obey in prayer like this. This Sunday, I invite anyone who would like to to come, come to worship and then stay for healing prayer. After I greet those who've been here for worship at the door, I'll come back to the front to the steps here at the chancel, and we will pray for those who are seeking healing. We'll have several of the church leaders there as well who will take part in this prayer time. It doesn't have to be physical healing that you're seeking. It may be spiritual healing or emotional healing. It, it just is, you have some area of your life that is disordered, that is in disarray. And you're asking God to turn the page, to bring new, to bring healing. We will pray for you. If you'd like, we'll also anoint you with, with oil. It's, it's a vial of olive oil that we'll use. We'll put the sign of the cross on your forehead or on the back of your hand. Now, there's nothing magical or there's no good luck in this act of oppose, imposing a cross and, and using the oil. We're just doing this as an act of faith. We're saying we're trusting you, God, for the healing that you've promised as we anoint this person and as we gather around as leaders of the church and we pray for them. So come. If you're seeking healing, come. Be part of our worship and then stay for the healing prayer time as well. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about Debbie and I as a clergy couple. Debbie is my absolute best friend, the love of my life. And yes, we are both called to be pastors. And I know that's a little unusual for some. I answered the call in 2007 and Debbie in 2009. And we've dreamed of serving together, serving the same church at the same time. Uh, but God has not had that in, the, in God's design for us. Debbie serves at Hope Eternal United Methodist Church in Newport. She's been there for about a year, and God is just richly blessing her ministry at Hope Eternal. You can just get the sense that she is the one that God has called there in this time. I have to say that I'm getting the same kind of feeling here at Wesley. So it's confirmation that this is what God has for us in our lives. Now, one of the great blessings that that we, is that we can really relate to each other 
because we know what we go through each day. We know the joys and the struggles that we face in ministry together. And so we spend extended times in prayer each day, praying for each other and for our churches. And we pray for the struggles, we pray for the joys, and we really can join our hearts as one in those times. We also then celebrate the victories that God brings for both of our ministries. And that's quite a rewarding relationship for us. Sometimes God leads us to do the same sermon series at the same time. So we get to study the same scripture together. We get to maybe put different parts of the service together and help each other in that way. But that's pretty rare. Most of the time, God seems to give us each individual messages uniquely for our own churches, uh, sort of aimed at where that our churches really are individually. Now, it took a little getting used to the routine of two pastors in the same family. But once we were, once we got into that rhythm, it has been such a blessing for us. We both consider God's call to be pastor to be a very rich blessing, as well as a great responsibility. Well, thanks for joining me again today. I would ask if you have questions, just send them my way. I'd be glad to try to answer questions about Wesley or myself or, or Debbie. I'll do my best here in the video or possibly in an upcoming newsletter. Now, I hope to see you Sunday. Mm -hmm.